Good morning and welcome, Patriot Radio News Hour. I'm not even going to say happy Monday. It's Monday. I'm Joe Jaquin, CEO of the Patriot Trading Group, and I hope it finds you well. I hope you had a, well, the best weekend you possibly could have. I was, uh, believe it or not, I was in Las Vegas with friends of mine, and none of us are big gamblers, and I'm disappointed. Uh, Vegas is, I mean, there's people there. Uh, doesn't have the vibe uh, that it that it normally had. We were at the Mandalay Bay, um, and it was packed full of uh, parents and kids. I was, it, it was very surprising. Uh, and, and I shouldn't say packed's the wrong word. Um, it was actually a lot less people than I thought. More people than, I'm sure that than has normally been in Las Vegas. Uh, the tables were no more than three people to a table, all the plexiglass and uh, mask everywhere. Uh, we had, uh, there was 10 of us, but by and large, there, there were seven of us that, that were hanging out quite a bit together. And the second, uh, the seventh person got there, I mean, literally in a minute, they were on you. Hey, you guys, that's two. You only can have six at a t- uh, we couldn't all have dinner together, you know, you, they wouldn't allow any more than six at a table and, and things like that. Uh, give Vegas another year. That's just my opinion. If you're a diehard gambler, I guess, right, then, uh, but even then, even, uh, you know, the very limited in the tables, you know, I would say 20% were open and, and the rest were, were just closed, so... Uh, at some points in time, it was hard to, to play blackjack because it only allowed uh, three people at a table. And I would say maybe there was 10 blackjack tables total, maybe. And all, you know, if you do the whole thing uh, that were open at any one time, uh, the, the minimums were really pricey. Uh, the minimum table anywhere, 25 bucks. And then at nighttime, they jumped to 50. Uh, so we didn't do a lot of gambling at all, and uh, I don't know I don't know how it'll all work out. I really don't. Um, but I, I figure about a year away. The restaurants, the vast majority of them were closed. So that was the other part. The, the clubs, uh, not that we would go to the clubs, but the clubs at where the hotel we were staying at were closed. Uh, the restaurants, uh, they had a steak place open and one other place, an Italian place, and that was really it, and then all the rest were closed. So... Uh, I, I'd wait a year. There you go. There's my there's my update on on Las Vegas. Uh, our toll free number again eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. I apologize for those of you that listen to the roar of the Rockies on the stream. Uh, the stream is down right now. Not our issue. Not our issue. I'll read to you what Shoutcast sent us. That today was scheduled maintenance. Okay, so April the twelfth. Dear broadcaster, they said, please note that Monday, April 12th, during the day, this is kind of like when you schedule to get your cable installed. Uh, well, what time are you going to be there? Oh, I don't know. You know, sometime between uh, 10 o'clock in the morning and 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Sometime during the day, the Shoutcast service will undergo scheduled maintenance to improve our infrastructure as a whole and fix other service bugs okay listen it has to be done you know i'll use my office here in phoenix this week starting thursday uh they're gonna get the, they're gonna start working on the floors right you know because you know after 15 16 years things need to get replaced you know got to do a little maintenance uh, a few weeks ago we did the painting uh, and this is how long things take uh, it's so funny just to get work the, the products and the workers scheduled and this year waiting months and months and months. But I get that part. This maintenance will allow our team to finalize our work towards a new infrastructure where we'll, we'll be able to improve the stream stability, which is not great, and offer more bug fixing in the future. Now here's the part that gets that really got me going. We expect during the maintenance period your station stream will be interrupted for one to five minutes. Uh, we're working on 
I believe this is our number three. And it may actually be our number four. Uh, it just depends on uh, we, 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 we weren't, you know, some of us were actually asleep uh, a while ago. So, yeah, not quite the one to five minutes. But don't worry, once it's back up, it'll be back up. We apologize. Uh, but but it's the best we can do in a short period of time. Uh, don't forget to our CBD products. Dude, they're so good. Restless leg syndrome. Got an email from uh, one of our listeners in Florida. We got li listen, people listen to 1360 all over the place uh, because it, there's nothing like it out there. Non censored radio, it's, there's nothing like it. Uh, he has restless leg. And a lot of you, if you have it, it's brutal. Can't sleep, can't, you know, really just uh, affect so much of it. He just says the CBD. Oh, he goes, within, his email, within a minute, it starts working for him. So just another example, if you've got, you know, a lot of these little uh, aches and pains or, or things of that nature, give it a try. Uh, you know, for me, and I know the directions, you know, they're, they're, they're a little evasive on the dosage, on the tinctures. I just do a squeeze, a squeeze of the dropper. It fills it up about halfway, and that's about, that's what I'm using. Uh, they do it on purpose, though. They say because everyone's a little different. But anyway, uh, check them out. It really, really benefits the radio station, and the products are amazing. When we get back, Jay Powell was talking again over the weekend. I'll tell you what he said. Don't touch that dial. 800 592 Patriot Radio News Hour, Hungary tripling uh, gold reserves. Uh, th this was a country, you know, think about it. Go back to like 2017, they were they almost had no gold. Uh, they bought some gold in 2018 uh, and, uh, and then all of a sudden uh, they announced last week that they bought another 60 plus metric tons of gold. Uh, they're now just under 100 metric tons. Uh, they they and here's what they noted as to why. Why? And we talk about this a lot. Why do you buy gold? Gold's a hedge. It's what it is. What is it hedge? Whatever your currency is. Whatever your fiat currency is. It's not a promise to pay. It's not an electronic credit. It's something real. It's something tangible. It's the only thing that's been money for thousands of years. It's the only one. I mean, they can try to tell you that it's not, right? But we all know. Gold is always, it's always worth something. It never goes to zero. And when you want to start accumulating gold is when, well, let's just tell you what the Bank of Hungary said. Because remember when they buy gold, what they're not buying. Okay? Normally, what they want, what the bankers want, is for them to buy bonds. And they don't care which. Uh, Government-issued securities are their favorites, right? The treasuries. But hey, if you want to buy corporate bonds, or, or if you want to buy mortgage bonds, right? That's fine, too. But when they start looking at it, they're like, eh, you know, I think I'd rather have some gold just in case all the rest of these quote-unquote promises to pay don't get paid. I mean, that's really the, the, the simple part of it. The appearance, and here was the Bank of Hungary. Now remember, it's their bankers doing this, so that they know. The appearance of global spikes in government debts and inflation concerns further increase the importance of gold in national strategy as a safe haven asset and as a store of value as a result of the decision. The central bank says that gold is one of the most crucial reserve assets worldwide, stating that it carries no credit or county or counterparty risk. 
Uh, by the way, that was uh, the biggest monthly purchase, the 63 metric tons, since Poland bought 94 metric tons in 2019. Uh, and, of course, uh, India uh, was also purchasing gold in February. They acquired 11.2 metric tons. So we've got a lot of central bank buying going on. And, again, it really illustrates the point. It's a store of value. It's not a counterparty risk. You don't have to worry about non-payment. You don't have to worry about, you know, any government uh, interventions of any sort. You know, my, uh, you know, you don't have to worry about restatement of earnings or uh, fraud or, or you know, any of the other uh, things that that happen uh, when you're talking about buying debt. And you know, this is listen, our currency is a debt laden system. There's nothing backing it. It's just a piece of paper with color on it. It's going to change to an electronic credit soon. And the realities are there's no way in you know what that we can pay this debt. I wish, right? Wouldn't it be great if we could? Uh, Jay Powell was out over the weekend again, and this is the other thing you're going to see. Uh, the Federal Reserve's need to get on TV. Right, because they want to go out there. Listen, it's all about messaging. It's all about being able to convince you that the reality that you know is true isn't. It's like that listener that called me up. It's classic gaslighting. And he was at it again. Listen, they understand the power of it. Why do you think all of a sudden YouTube and Twitter and Facebook ban all these videos? Why do you think a guy like David Knight called us to say, can I get on your radio station? Because I want to get my message out. And you know what? All these other platforms, they just want to ban you. How about Joe Rogan? Joe Rogan. Comedian, right? He he does UFC, right? He's the main voice of the, you know, when they're, you got the big UFC fights. Excuse me, Joe Rogan's the guy commentating. Spotify paid him, I forget, some ungodly amount of money. I think it's like a hundred million dollars. And you know what they've been doing? Taking off a bunch of his shows. Old shows. Nah, you know what? We don't like what that one thing. Yeah, you know, take that out. Right, and, and you know, it was one thing. Oh, well, they took off the Alex Jones one, right? Okay, but now, now it's so much more than that. Right, you have uh, COVID medical professionals who don't want to give out the standard message. They get taken down over and over and over and over and over again. This is how powerful the media is. They don't want you to know it here's the sad part it actually doesn't prevent what's going to happen it doesn't prevent it them coming out and gaslighting all of us and you know again the whole inflation things come up uh it, it's one of these things now uh, where when you, you start seeing gas prices uh, you start seeing food prices every day there's another uh, item that you can't get or that's gotten so expensive today. Uh, President Biden meeting with the, uh, the, the automobile companies. And they're like, what the heck are you guys doing? We can't make any cars because we don't got any chips. And, and of course, Apple, no chips. But Jay Powell was out in 60 minutes over the weekend. And he was saying that the economy is recovering. And of course, listen, anything could recover with the amount of money we've spent. Right? The realities are, if we never closed it down, we wouldn't have had to spend the money. But that's, that's a different argument. Because it's too late, right? They've already spent it. 
It included a statement of near certainty that interest rates won't be going anywhere as inflation remains tame. See, they won't let it go. And millions of Americans in need of assistance as the nation rebuilds from the damage, it is highly unlikely that we would raise rates anything like this year. So, just so you know, they told us for, well, for what, for about 15 years, they promised us they had this inflation target. It was 2%. Yeah. Don't worry, guys. See, this was new. This is a, a lot, like everything else we get out of these central banks. You know, oh, we've got tools in the toolkit, right? It's just new. New things that they've come up with to try to justify the taxation that they're putting on all of us. Because this is what, think about how cruel this is right now. Because what's the real rate of inflation? Normally, I would tell you 5 to 7%. That's higher than that. I mean, we're probably close to 10. And I'm looking at all these price increases. Right? And, I, and I'm looking at, like, General Mills uh, talking about uh, high single-digit right, price, uh, price increases. Procter & Gamble, same thing. Uh, chip makers talking about 10 to 20 percent uh, lumber prices. You know, the, remember, you added $24,000 to the just the lumber. Matter of fact, between the lumber and the copper, you would probably add about 30 grand to every house. And they came up with this fantasy of yes, we'd like to target inflation. Now, it's funny because they had been targeting inflation for decades. You know how they targeted it? By changing how we calculated it so it would be lower on purpose. And they were highly successful. I mean, inflation hasn't been above 2%. Outside of a uh, maybe a, a quick flash uh, after uh, the third quantitative easing, but really hadn't been higher than three percent in this millennium. And they came out and said two percent, two percent. Now most people don't know what this is, right? Inflation. I don't, I don't, I'm not really sure. It's just devaluation, and we want to devalue you by 2% every year. Now, that would be wonderful if they paid 4% interest or 5% interest. That'd be fine, right? But they, they pay 0% interest, right? Your bank doesn't pay you squat. And then the head banker says, we want... 2% inflation. Now, they've said that they haven't been able to get it, right? which is well, you know, the way they count it now. Hey, after we changed all the math, right, to fuzzy math, and I always love telling the story about my son. Well, my oldest son is a finance major, uh, goes to school in Chicago. As part of uh, his classes, they took a tour of the Chicago Federal Reserve. Awesome. Just so happened they decided to try to teach these college kids that had an interest in finance and economics how they calculate inflation. They tried to explain it to these college kids. You know what my son said afterwards? Dad, it was the dumbest thing you had ever heard. He goes, 
They were sitting there telling us how they would take the price of things. The actual price of things. And then change it. And he goes, the funny thing was, is we all noticed, every change was lowering the actual price. And he goes, we even asked, but that's not the real number. And then he goes, he just kept talking. And we just looked at each other and was like, this is dumb. Now, they didn't really understand how it impacted them. But now let's go back to my, my, my thing, right? They wanted 2%. Jay Powell just went on 60 Minutes and said he knows inflation is spiking. I mean, I was off on Friday. I apologize. Uh, but, you know, sometimes you got you to gotta take a few days off. You got to do it. The inflation that was by, released by the Bureau of Labor Statistics was off the charts. Said, I don't care. We'll talk more about that when we return. 800 951 Patriot Radio News Hour. So Jay Powell's out on 60 minutes gaslighting all of us. Highly, highly unlikely we're going to be raising rates. I'm in a position, he said, to guarantee. That the Fed will do everything we can to support the economy for as long as it takes to complete the recovery. Hmm. Hmm. So let's see. According to Jay Powell, now this is just what he said. And again, I don't know where he gets these numbers. Uh, they just make them up. But in his little interview, he said there's 8 million people out of work. Uh, I don't know what happened to the other 10 million, but they just disappeared. Uh, but okay. If there's truly 8 million people out of work, and let's face it, we all know. The second you stop paying them more money to sit at home, they'll go to work. Uh, and, I, and I do this example for everyone, because Arizona, our, our insurance, our unemployment stinks. It's got, it, it needs to go up. Okay, and, and 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 I say that because it's it's not fair. You only get two hundred and forty dollars a week. And I think they're raising it and I and, and they may it already may have happened. I think we're going to three hundred bucks, but still, even three hundred, it's not great. But when you add another three hundred, right? So you get three hundred, but they're gonna add another which is what they're doing now. That's sixteen bucks or six hundred bucks. That's the equivalent of working 40 hours a week at $15 an hour. Now, in Arizona, you know, I, I don't know that anybody's paying the state minimum wage anymore, which I believe is $10 or $11. Most places are in this $12 to, to $14. Let's call it $12 to $15 an hour. That's if you get $40. So essentially what you're telling these people is, hey, don't go back to work because you're going to make as much or more sitting at home doing nothing. I mean, even if you're working, even, let's just say you're getting paid $18 an hour. Well, if you only were working 34 hours a week at $18, that's only 612 and, of course, there's payroll tax and this and that and the other. Da, da. I mean, you're, you're asking for people not to work. We've created uh, this horrible, horrible thing. And, and, of course, the central bank loves it. But now he's saying, you know what? Even our fake inflation numbers are saying that it's going to be much higher than 2%. And I'm still not going to give anybody any interest. I mean, what's it going to be? Three, four? I don't know. 
But this is supposed to be one of the big things they're supposed to be protecting us from. And this is how little they think of your money. It's how little. They don't care. You know, and he said there that he's in position to guarantee that they're going to do everything. To support the economy, not to support you or I. No, to support their precious little system. Inflation is a tax, period. You know, and I know uh, Sleepy Joe's talking, oh, yeah, I'm not going to raise taxes. And yet, you know, all these, all these initiatives uh, that don't require congressional approval being talked about. Remember, uh, how about his Treasury Secretary, Janet Yellen? Oh, yeah, we're going to have a, a global tax thing, right? We're all going to pool together. We're going to, all the countries will collude together. To raise corporate taxes. What do you think is going to happen? I mean, really. You think they're just going to pay more tax and not charge us more? Of course they are. And, and here's the thing, though. The amount that, that they're talking about raising is a joke. Right? We're going into debt 4 to $5 trillion a year. And they're talking about bills that raise tax bills that raise two or three hundred billion. I mean, they're, they're jokes. But inflation is a tax. We've got to pay more for everything. And I mean everything is getting more expensive. And at the same time, the amount of interest they're paying continues to be essentially zero. And here's the problem now. All these other bonds, you know, that we talked about earlier, remember, why, why did all of us, Hungary, all of us buy 60 metric tons of gold in a month? India's back adding to their gold reserves. Poland's adding to their gold reserves. All these other guys bring in their gold home. And the answer is simple. They're like, well, I mean, hey, listen, we're going to tell you this story that's completely false. Right? And we talk about, where's you two banning Jay Powell on 60? Right? Where's that ban? Hey, Jay Powell, we just banned you because you lied. They're doing it because they know, wait a minute, why would I buy a U.S. Treasury 10-year note at 1.7%? Think about this. It was half a percent this time last year. So it just tells you, think about this. We've gone up 1.2% in interest rates, yet inflation has probably doubled. You're... The, the, in these countries know it. They're like, we're losing even more money now. You're going to give me 1.7%. Inflation's at least, and I'm being kind, is at least double that. Real inflation. What are we talking about? Four or five times that number? See, and here's the thing: when these countries, uh, when these when these bonds come to maturity, right? They use them to buy stuff. So we, they can pretend there's no inflation, but it doesn't change what the price of crude oil is. Doesn't change what the price of lumber is. Doesn't change the price of what copper or cement or or anything else is. And they know we're just losing money. They start losing money, they start hedging it with gold. Take the radio news hour. We'll be back after the break. 800-951-0592. Patriot Radio News Hour on this Monday. Jay Powell out on 60 minutes. I really should be banned. Right? Yeah, but it, it fits the narrative they want us to have. They don't really care about actual re, uh, facts. They don't.
Bannon's not about facts. They want you to believe it is. It's about having an opinion, or a lot of times not even an opinion, the actual facts, but anything that differentiates from what they want you to believe gets banned. That's what gets banned. It has nothing to do with truth or facts or anything else or even opinion. Hey, that's not what we want people to believe, so let's stop telling them that. Does that sound anything like freedom? So think about this. If inflation, and again, you should have heard him on 60 Minutes. He repeated the same line that, well, oh, right now we see inflation, it's only running about 1.6%. And again, as my son said, Dad, it was the dumbest thing I ever heard. Here's what he did say, though, and here's part of the problem. Here's what he'd like to see. I'd like to see it on track to move moderately above 2% for some time. First of all, what's moderately above? And how long is some time, Jay? Because remember, whatever number they tell us it is, that's the devaluation you're facing. Let me ask you this. Let me make it simple for you. Five years ago, you had $100,000 in the bank. Today, let's just say you still got that same 100000 Five years ago, think how much more of a house you could have gotten with $100,000 down five years ago versus today. Think about the price of anything. How much more gas you could have bought. How much more, you know, think about gold. Oh, man, have you been to the groceries? The price are they're outrageous. Right? iPhones, now they're Fifteen hundred bucks. What would you say? What do you think you could buy? Now, Jay Powell wants you to believe that you're only out about ten grand in five years. That whatever you could have bought five years ago for a hundred thousand dollars today, with that same hundred thousand, you could still buy ninety percent. Because that's what 2% inflation is. Right? 2% inflation every year for five years, that's 10%. And that's the way they look. That's that's their that's their Goldilocks. Of course, what they're supposed to do is pay you enough interest on that money that instead of having a hundred thousand dollars in the bank, you're supposed to have 110, or really, if in a perfect world, you'd have 112 or 115. Make it worth you keeping your money in the bank. Now he's letting you know, hey, I want that number to be even more. Now think about it. What's the real number? 80%? Right? 75%? That's probably much closer to what it is, 70, 75 percent. And now he tells you on 60 minutes, I want it to go hotter. I want it to be worse for you for longer. And all these other central banks, they know. And that's why they're all out there buying gold. It's simple. That's why you need to be buying gold. Because not, not, not just because of that, because they all know, hey, guess what? We're going to spiral into uh, the money's going to go to zero. I mean, that's really what's just going to happen. You know what I know. I know you know it. I mean, you can kid yourself and pretend. And, oh, I talked to my, my brother or my sister or my, my, my buddies that, you know, that we golf with. And they say, oh, I'm an idiot. No, you're not. You know what? It's the other way around. 
And listen, I get it. We love to do it. I like to do it. I want my head squarely right up my backside. I do. I don't want to deal with reality. <laughs> it sucks. But I'm not telling, listen, don't put all your money here. Don't do that, right? You still have it in have it in stocks, have it spread around, but you got to allocate more to gold and silver. You just do. And when believe me, when the digital money comes, then get the allocation more line, sell some back, not all of it, and take advantage. Today, I got two two good items today. Uh, one I've owned, and I, one uh, both are very limited. Okay, so I want to just say that I've got forty twenty dollar gold pieces. I'm going to put them at 19.95, but if you buy 20 or more, and I've only got 40, 19.75 regular price is 2,025. So that's a big savings. Uh, one through 19, 19.95, 20 or more, 19.75. I also have 10 one ounce platinum kangaroos i'm going to tell you about those when we get back patro radio news hour final segment coming up final segment here patro radio news hour uh i got 20 dollar gold pieces one through 19 1995 20 or more 1975 just don't have a lot and you know but it's right the price is fantastic take advantage of it think about this uh if poland Hungary and India all thought buying gold here the last, you know, 60 days was a pretty good price entry point. Uh, it's probably pretty good. Then I've got 10. These are, by the way, these these 10 are they're in Colorado, uh, live in Colorado. I can get them sent down here to Phoenix or I can have them shipped to you. But I've got 10 one-ounce platinum kangaroos. They're twelve hundred and ninety-five dollars, and I've only got ten of them. Uh, platinum, very hard to well, just like everything, it's hard to get. Tears up the machines. Uh, right now, platinum is at eleven hundred and seventy dollars or so, eleven hundred and sixty, eleven hundred and seventy. So, uh, platinum kangaroos. Uh, at twelve hundred ninety-five dollars. Remember, the U.S. used to mint platinum. We don't anymore because it tears the super hard metal, tears up the machines. You know, technically, platinum is supposed to be the second most expensive metal behind rhodium. Right now, it's the cheapest metal outside of silver. Gold's more expensive than it. Platinum's more expensive, or palladium's more expensive. What a nice play this is for the passage of the quote-unquote infrastructure bill. But don't worry, it's even going to get better with the family bill that's coming next because that's where they're going to get all the green, even more of the green stuff in there. Great play uh, for solar and wind and all of those things. Uh, got to have the silver, got to have the platinum, got to have the platinum, got to have the rhodium to do all that stuff. Uh, and I, I looked around. Uh, that's the cheapest I could find it. And we're most most uh, places, U.S. Government, government Hallmark Platinum, above $1,300. Uh, so $1,295 on one-ounce platinum kangaroos. I've only got 10 of them at 800 951 So you got a couple of choices. got a gold uh, and the platinum option. A uh, quick look here at the markets. Uh, Wall Street's down today. Uh, gold, everything's down. N nothing's down huge, but gold's down 10, uh, 1733. Uh, silver's down about 45 cents right now, $24.90. Uh, the Dow's down 40 some. Uh, the SP, the NASDAQ, uh, same thing. Crude oil's the only thing up today at $59.69. Uh, but be your own central bank. Don't put all your money into gold and silver, but you need to allocate. And again, one of those great rules of thumb, an ounce of gold for every year you've been alive. 800-951-0592. That's the toll-free number to call. 
Uh, uh, by the way, metals pans, again, just so you know, in case you didn't know, they're all done. So uh, be looking for those. Uh, if you don't have your metals plan by the end of the week, call us. Uh, because that probably just means the post office didn't leave you a slip and it's sitting at your post office. Uh, if you want to sign up for the medals plan, let us know. Tomorrow, we need to talk about the digital renewal. It's here. And isn't it ironic? The first country in the world to issue fiat money is now the first to go digital. We're talking about China. We'll, we're talking about that tomorrow. God bless everybody. Take care. We'll be back on Tuesday.